so Dr. Mesa, PV or polycythemia vera, um, there are some updates. There are a lot of different studies presented as well. What were the big ones for you? One, you know, a series of information just further validating the drug that just became approved a couple of weeks ago. So as I mentioned in ET, in P. vera, we now have ropegylated interferon alpha 2b or Bezremi approved in PV. This is the first drug approval in PV in almost a decade. Uh, and the first that is broadly both in the frontline and second line setting. So we discussed it's a small injection under the skin. It can help to control the blood counts. Uh, in a randomized trial in Europe, a large study, it was found to be better than hydroxyurea for controlling the disease, uh, both in the short term, but particularly in the long term, controlling the counts, maybe decreasing the molecular uh, burden of the disease, the decreasing the amount of that JAK2 mutation may help to decrease the likelihood of the disease progressing. So we're excited that that's approved. And there were a series of abstracts, again, just looking at longer term follow-up from those studies. There is an addition, a, a interesting new approach to PV earlier in development, not yet approved, but of a class of drugs that are called hepcidin agonists. Hepcidin is a molecule of inflammation. It is something that when it's elevated in the body, it simulates the anemia of chronic disease. And the reason this was chosen to be tested in P-Vera is that it may help to decrease the red blood cell count, which is a goal in PV that we normally achieve through phlebotomy. Now phlebotomy, when we take blood away, has a negative impact that it makes individuals iron deficient. And then iron deficiency may worsen the underlying symptoms with the disease. Uh, so the first of these hepcidin agonists of which we saw data at ASH is one called PTG300 or resveratide. Uh, and with that medication, they saw that individuals were able to become phlebotomy independent. So I was able to control the hematocrit without the need for phlebotomy. The goal of the iron levels in these individuals rising occurred. And most importantly, patients felt better. They were able to get off of phlebotomy. They were feeling better. They were less iron deficient. So that drug is going to go into a larger phase three trial to again, compare against a standard and there are other drugs with a similar approach, looking at trying to achieve it in different ways to see is one of these better than the other. Uh, but there will be other drugs in this similar sort of class looking to control the need for phlebotomies, either in individuals who are not on other medicines or potentially in combination. So it'll have an impact, not quite ready for prime time, uh, but it will have an impact in the near future, uh, but available now for those that it's appropriate is the ropegylate interferon alpha 2b. Uh, that's those are great. Those are great updates. I was going to ask about this um, resveratide, um, just because I'm, I'm curious who. I mean, you you talked about the iron deficiency, right? So the phlebotomy and the bloodletting it really helps avoid the blood clots. It's a really big deal, and this resveratide is hopefully going to help. Uh, with the with with the avoiding of the blood clots, but keeping the iron so you don't have the iron deficiency. How was that manifesting in patients, though? How was that impacting their quality of life when they were having to deal with, oh my gosh, I don't have the iron, and I still have to do this so that I don't have these blood clots? So we know that that control of the hematocrit or the percent of blood by volume that are red blood cells is important to achieve to decrease the risk. And the negative with phlebotomies is one, the hematocrit is always going up and down. You know, it climbs up, you get a phlebotomy, it goes down. When you go to get a phlebotomy, it takes time, it's, it's inconvenient. There may be a day afterward that you feel lightheaded because the blood has been taken off. Uh, for the days that you need a phlebotomy but haven't had one yet, you might have headaches. You already need a phlebotomy. You're spending part of your time really above the target. So one, it's a very uneven way of controlling the, the counts. And two, the iron deficiency really 
adds additional fatigue and other symptoms that are already present in PD. So you put both together, it's a tough combination. So I might envision that it could not only help people that currently are taking other medicines like hydria or things of that nature, but it might help people who just don't feel well who are getting phlebotomies alone. It might be a more even type of control, might be better quality of life. Well, thank you for that. Um, and, and is there any last sort of summarizing message you'd like to tell PD patients and caregivers? Well, the approval of a new drug really is, is, is big news. Uh, it may not be for everyone, but it is something if you're a PV patient, particularly if you're on a medicine, to discuss with your healthcare provider to see whether it's something that uh, might be appropriate in your circumstance. And for everyone who wants to see Dr. Mace's full conversation, just head to thepatientstory.com where you'll find human answers to your cancer questions.